Now, increases to the minimum wage and a range of benefits come into force today. But do they go far enough to cover the cost of living? Labor Minister David Parker and, for the very last time, National MP Simon Bridges. Good morning to you both. Good morning. morning. We um, have been speaking a bit this morning about the impact that this will have on our lowest income families. So I, I want to start with you two about whether it's going to extend into middle New Zealand. And I, I just want a straight yes or no answer out of you both first. So, David, to you first, do these payments benefit middle New Zealand? Well, they benefit every superannuitant who's a couple goes up by $60 per fortnight, so yes. Yes, OK. And uh, Simon? No. Look, I mean, if you're a couple, for example, with two kids and earning 110 k you don't get working for families and you're significantly worse off. With OK. Wife. So, yeah, Simon, what would you say, give me a figure, what do you deem to be middle New Zealand? Give me an annual family income of... Uh, what you would consider a middle New Zealand income for a family? Melissa, I think the reality is it's more than perhaps um, some, indeed, some in the media might think. And I say that because, actually, if you're a couple... In so how much would it be? Do you think well, uh, you mentioned 110? It, it so much depends on the circumstance. But let, I'll give you some figures. If you're a couple in Auckland and you've got two, three, four kids and combined you're earning 150, 160 grand, actually, you know what? Right now, when cost of living is 6% um, and your wages haven't been going up and you've got various fixed costs, maybe one of you is having to look after an elderly parent, you're middle New Zealand and you're doing it tough. Uh, David, what do you consider to be middle New Zealand? Give me a, an annual income figure. I, I think the figure that Simon first mentioned about 110. 110. OK, so you say, for, for you a, say that middle, in, middle New Zealanders income. are going to benefit. So an annual income of 110 on this working for families tax credits list, um, 110, no. There's no payment through working for families. Well, that, that's, anyway. that's where, with respect, your question's a bit simplistic because I'm sure that most superannuitants who are middle class who get $60 per fortnight from this see themselves as substantially benefited. But, but the mean, reality, even for them, is they are still not better off because um, cost of living increases are so broad based that the upping um, still doesn't get them there. Simon, with let's let's take two um, two parents earning fifty k a year each with two kids. Fifty k is about the median for say. A, a, a couple of parents in their 30s, they, they don't get anything under the Working for Families tax credits, but under National's proposed tax changes, they would only get $6 a week, so that's not actually going to impact their cost of living. But, but I think what people... we were trying to... But I think what we're trying to do there is simply say, look, actually, as cost of living rises, in terms of your income, you won't be worse off. We'll keep that relativity. So that's what that package was doing. I acknowledge it doesn't solve all of the issues that there are when you've got rampant inflation and interest rates going up the way we are. But certainly what's true is the government shouldn't be uh, trumpeting this lot. Most don't get anything. Those who do... Uh, David, still... so let's just let David answer. What, what your package did, did was give 6000 8000 to someone earning 180 grand a year and two bucks a week to someone on the minimum wage. I mean, that I, would I come back to it. A couple, that would a, couple with kids, a couple with kids at 110, even 150k aren't rich. And actually, okay. they deserve some relief. I'm not Let's move on to right. the protest. It's um, day one of what they say will be a 14 day protest at Pukiahu National War Memorial Park today. David, do you think that this should be shut down straight away or do you feel that we need to show here that protests are still an important part of democracy and that they should be allowed to go ahead with their protest action I, today? I, I think people have got a right to protest. They haven't got a right to block roads. How that's enforced is up to the police. I, I, I am a bit intrigued, you know. Will the tinfoil hats come back? I mean, it's the 1st of April. But it does feel a wee bit like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, these vaccine certificates, the uh, vaccine Vaccine passes go next Tuesday. You know, most of the mandates have now gone. We still need them in the health sector, in the in the rest homes, and in our prisons. Um, these people would oppose that as well, so we disagree. Simon, how do you feel that the protest should be handled today? Um, well, first, there's a bit of a sense of deja vu, and I 
I don't actually often, but I went out for a bit of a walk around Parliament and the grass is just starting to grow. So it's a bit sad for poor old grass if they come back. I mean, my understanding is the Speaker and police are going to fence things off so they won't be getting in there. I mean, I'm a bit like David, probably a bit more on that right to protest side. That to me is incredibly okay. important. Then on the other side of it, the problem is... Um, look, actually, we don't want the plumbing and the toilets and overnights and uh, the violence. And so yeah, I, I do understand. There's a line, the isn't there? Yeah. Um, I want to change the topic entirely now to housing and house price inflation. And I just want to play you a video, uh, which was actually from AM last year. It was around May, where you were both on with our political panel. Here it is. So the Treasury predicts that house price inflation from uh, July onwards is 0.9% per annum. Uh, rather than the out-of-control rates. Do you believe rates in are... UFOs, David? Well, they're not my numbers, they're Treasury's numbers. I so... want you to keep talking because we're going to play this back to you in a year. And look, it's not quite a year. We're not at May yet, but this is your last political panel with us, Simon. So I did want to um, play that. And incidentally, One Roof Velocity house values this morning have Auckland values dropping 0.1%. Um, the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand said February growth was just 0.6%. So... Simon... So who believes in UFOs? Do you well, believe in UFOs? <laughs> no, no, I don't. The reality is, though, I mean, if you look, for example, at um, rent and housing costs, according to Trade Me, I think it was yesterday, they're the highest they've been seven, eight months. So kind of pick, pick your numbers. And the reality is New Zealanders know uh, it's incredibly tough out there and housing and rent is, is part of that. David? Uh, look, I hate to say I told you so, <laughs> but I told you so. Well, <laughs> Simon, you're actually in the market at the moment of selling and, and buying because, of course, you're moving from Tauranga yeah. to Auckland. How are you finding it? Well, you know, I don't want to say anything on this TV show that's going to dampen my chances, Melissa. So let's be very <laughs> judicious and more careful than I normally am uh, on this uh, on this show. Look, markets, the market has softened. I mean, just, that's, that's the fact of it. But the reality is, um, and here comes the sales pitch, quality is still worth quality prices. But um, <laughs> anyway, let's keep moving. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, um, Simon Bridges, thank you so much. And I, Ryan probably wants to say a quick thank you too for um, being with our political panel uh, this year. Thank you yeah. both. Yeah, you've, been, you've always been a really good sport about the whole thing, Simon. Um, much as you hate each other, you know, <laughs> visceral <laughs> hatred behind the scenes. There's no hate. No, I know. You've been, you've been, uh, you've been an absolute star. And we really do appreciate you coming on every week. It's, and, you know, especially when you're flying up to Auckland and stuff as well. So thank you. Yeah. Thank Good you. On you guys. National MP Simon Bridges um, on his very admirable. last political political panel and Labor Minister uh, David Park. I think I think David wanted to say something. Oh, actually. sorry, David. Yeah, oh, David, you have an, an, an admirable opponent. Democracy relies on a contest of ideas, and I think you know, Simon. Thank you for contributing to democracy. Thank you. Oh, oh sure. It's just too oh, sweet, sure. isn't it? That is nice. And Very now nice. pe people always say, is he your dad, Simon Bridges? Because we have the same last name, similar last name. Similar, mm, yeah. So, is he your dad? That now. He, I don't know, actually. <laughs> what? We could be related. Simon, are you my dad? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, I'm not going to end the panel this way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's how it's ended. <laughs>